What is love? Love is every person has its song. Every song, every person has its beauty. And when that person forgets the song, and you're the one who is reminding them that song, that's true love. Welcome back to another episode of Inspiration for the Nation. And this is a person that comes from two very different worlds. You probably know Barry Weber as that incredible, amazing singer, but not enough people know that he plays a very, very important role in the Jewish world as well. And he's a Rosh Hashiva. Yes, you heard me right. He's a Rosh Hashiva. Uh, he deals with um, Hasidim and boys that uh, maybe have been mistreated or misunderstood. And he has a yeshiva for them and he does incredible work and he's still a singer and he uses both of those worlds together to help out each of those worlds respectfully. And I got to sit down with him. This was a, a late night schmooze, um, probably the latest episode of anything I've ever recorded. Uh, this was actually that the same night I recorded Lipa Schmelzer and then uh, after I was in Muncie, I went to Barry Weber. Uh, it's one of the perks of being on the road. I figured if like if, if I did Shulam Lemmer in the same night, then maybe Mashiach would have come. Just like three awesome Hasidish people, but uh, it was incredible to sit down with him and and get to know him more. And here it is. We can all use some inspiration to help us overcome the obstacles we encounter in our lives. Get ready for thrilling conversations about struggle and triumph with those in pursuit of making a positive impact in this world. I'm Yaakov Langer, and you're listening to Inspiration for the Nation. Okay, I'm here with uh, Rabbi Barry Weber. What? Oh. No? But you have a yeshiva. Are you Rosh Hashiva? I'm Rosh Hashiva. But you're not Rabbi. No, I prefer Barry. Okay. Barry has in it rabbi. Oh, interesting. Were you, Barry's, at least to me, a Litvish guy is a unique name. Were you always called Barry or is that like? No. Happens to be, I grew up being called Berala. Berala, okay. As a kid. But my mother always liked to call me Shmielber. Mm. That's, that's my full name. Shmielber. Shmielber. So, Sh- Bear is after the Magid, Doiv Bear. Mm-hmm. And Shmiel, I'm not sure exactly, but... But it's, I'm named after my grandfather, my mother's father, which his name was Shmuel but he was named after the Magad and someone else. So Barla would be the choice for it as a, like a friendly, childly name, Barla. And then Shmuel Bear is like more of my serious name, like the, my rabbis in Chayda would call me. Mm. If you're making trouble or Stam? No, just like, Stam. that's the, like, uh, you know, the more of the, like, this is your name. And then um, when I started singing... Um, I had uh, Lipa Schmelzer, he helped me out, um, he was a friend of mine, and he helped me out with uh, promoting and, and so on. And he mentioned that Barry would be much more of a, like a catch, you know, something, you know, shorter and sweet. Right. Well, so, I don't know, was there a singer before Barry? Like No. No, so you like, it's your name. Right. And um, <laughs> it's interesting. Because um, at the time, there was someone in my class who his name was uh, was Barry, and he was like a like a big guy. And to me, I, I'm, you know, I was I was like a skinny guy. And to me, it didn't make any sense. Like it didn't register my brain. Barry, he's like, listen, if if you'll make it, if people are gonna like music from now on, Barry's gonna be this tall, skinny guy, <laughs> right? And Shmiel is gonna be whatever Shmiel is. You know, right? And um, then my friend uh, uh, Shmuel Younger, who he also right. his name is Shmuel David, and when he started singing, hmm. he he some whatever they came up, they're gonna call him Shmuel. They were gonna call him Barry, but they're like, oh shit, it's already <laughs> taken. <laughs> Shmuel David, so right? It's pretty co- close to because it's 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 uh, Shmuel Dov, Shmuel right. David. That is very close. And he's calling himself Shmuel. So Shmilo, what to me was the skinny guy, came the bigger guy. <laughs> it the bigger guy. Interesting. Seeing how these things work. So we're I, back then. He was big. Now he's. Oh, he did. 
He, he lost some weight. I did not know. Okay, I'm not in the hack. <laughs> so, so where did you grow up? I grew up in Williamsburg. Okay. And um, I lived in Monroe for a few, a couple of years after I got married, and uh, then I moved to Muncie after five years. And you were always pa- Papa Hasid. I grew up in the Papa Hasid. Actually, the 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 grand, the previous Papa Rebbe, is my grand uncle. Oh wow. Yichas, My elder fetter, exactly. Mm. And um, and my basically my grandfather was a, his brother-in-law. So that was kind of like a family Hasidus that we grew up in. But um, after I got married, I was soul searching. I was looking for something more, more something that speaks more to my heart and my soul. And since then, I keep on searching. And I've never stopped. Hashem should help that I should, should be able to continue. Tell the Kirk to continue more. But Breslov is a everyone big part of my life. Everyone listening, answer Amen. Okay, Amen. Yes. Yeah. Uh, Breslov is a big part of my life. But always people are like, you know, whenever I sit down with this guy that is, you know, that grew up Chabad, he's like, you can see that little uncomfortability where he like wants, doesn't want, want to be offensive or, right. you know, you know, <laughs> you know, when you have... You end up to some uh, place and something, and you find a, like a, like a non Jew guy. He's like, I don't mean to be offensive, right. but can I ask you about that things <laughs> inside of you? And I'm like, like, whenever someone says, I don't mean to be offensive, <laughs> the most offensive question is coming up. No, it happens to me. I always love when they ask these you questions. Like these I feel things. so special. Like, I feel like so important. Different, unique. Yeah. Right. And it has such a beautiful answer. Everything in, in Judaism, Yiddish guy has something so meaningful, so deep. And I, I feel I was. You know, there's these musicians that play by weddings, and um, some of them are, you know, some most of them are not religious, but some of them who have a rel- religious background, and y- you know, we we have knowledge from thousands of years, right? And everything goes, you know, with Masada. So sometimes you can have a ten-year-old kid or a fifteen-year-old kid who's doing something uh, very unique and different, and it has a very deep clever meaning behind it as long as you don't talk about it you look at the person you know he's wearing something on his head like a big hat a big streimel you know it has no meaning the other day i had like uh i i sang in miami boys choir and uh, i was backstage and there was the guys who did the lighting i think also asked me i don't mean to be offensive but was chalamoid what's that fur thing that you have and i started explaining that you know, back in Ukraine or Russia, whatever it was in that area, Poland, you know, always went back and forth. The Jews were kind of considered in the books something beneath the roaches, like like they were like very degraded. And that's one of the things that the Vashem Tov did, he uplifted Kali Yisrael, you know, from really giving them meaning that, you know, you're something amazing, something big, you know. So they would force the Jews just to embarrass them, you know, to you know, make them feel like they're they're worth nothing. They they have to wear they have to wear a tail on their head because a tail is something that's like the end of an animal, which is degrading. <clears throat> so, so the, you know the I, I don't know if it was the Bashem or, or or in that area. They said, so this is why they want us to wear it to be ashamed. We'll wear that as a crown, you know. We'll make it beautiful mm-hmm. and so on. I went into this whole thing, and they were like. Wow. They're like, I want to strike. Can I touch it? <laughs> <laughs> they want to pet it. Wow. Yeah, and then you, then you go on how much it costs, and then they're right. like, then, then they're really excited. Yeah. So you know, it's interesting because, at least for me, you know, unfortunately, I had like a very first grader idea of what Breslov is because I think Breslov, I think Nanach. And then I, at least my Rashiv Rabbi Center, I got there and he's very into Rabbi Nachman and Breslev. And I'm like, whoa, this is this. I only had like a very little idea of what Breslev really is. So someone who doesn't really know what Breslev is, how would you describe it? Well, Breslev started with the grandchild of the Baal Tov. And uh, he was a unique soul, and he said it himself, which was very controversial at the time. He said, Chiddush Kamoni lo haya ba'olam. Like a, a Chiddush. How do, you, how do you say a Chiddush? A new thing. Uh, like something like a wow, mm-hmm. like me, was never in this world, which is very controversial. What do you mean a person says that? But this, we're not going to get into that. Okay. But the Pashtas, you know, to put it in simple words, 
Reb Nachman was he identified as his soul, not he wasn't talking about himself. He was talking about his soul, the soul that Hashem, you know, gave. You know that that body carried was such a special and so that had such, that had such a big power to conquer Kalisto to the tshuva that he simply had mercy in all these souls that are connected to him and said, "Guys, <laughs> just be aware. This thing, if you connect to this thing, it could enlighten you. It could really, you know, give you like this immense power. So check it out. You know, I'm way more serious than you think I am. <laughs> I may." So, so it's Reb Nachman with his big soul, which obviously we can see the results today. Thousands and thousands of people are, you know, getting that as a light to get closer to Hashem. So obviously Breslev is a path of how to get closer to Hashem, and everybody has their own path and so on, but so many souls find common ground, and they found comfort and warmth from this direction, from this Mahalach. And... Simply, the word breast the word breastlev means it comes from the from the from the words lev basar, which says nach. I'll remove from from you your lev evan, your heart of stone, and I'll give you a lev basar. When Mashiach is going to come, when there's going to we're going to live in the messianic era when the whole world unites and everybody starts thinking the same and. You know, the wisdom of Hashem is entering our brains and we're starting to see it and feel it and be it. That's when the heart is not going to be a heart of stone. It's going to be a heart of flesh, which means it's flexible. Mm. It's real. It's vulnerable. It's it's meaningful. It's deep. And that's 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 basically, if you want to put it in two in two words, you know, you know, people know Chabad and Breslev. There are many, many, many ways, but... That's what people are aware of. So, you know, we're also going to touch about that. Chabad is more Chachma Ben Adas, which is, you know, it, which is expands in, in the thought process, you know, in, in the brain area. Although the heart is also, you know, connected to the brain. But if you want to simplify it, you know, Chabad is more connected in, in the meditation form of, you know, expanding your thoughts and brains and, and understanding mm-hmm. and, and, and Yudia of Hashem. And Breslev would be more of a simple, what we call more of a Pashita way of working on your heart, your feelings, and getting your 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 day to day desires intertwined with what the Ratzon Hashem is, you know, to take your desires and 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 weave it into what you know what Hashem ultimately wants, which goes through the heart. That's the drive. That's the that's the vehicle which takes you to your, you know experiencing yourself. So so my question for you is like what 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 was missing in your life that you said like whoa this this idea from Breslov really is speaking to me. Obviously, it's very hard for me really to like to express really, you know, what's going on on in here because it's going to take me a lifetime. Right. And many things that I think I know, I'll find out in 10 years <laughs> that I, you know, I didn't touch. And every person is like that. Everybody is, a, you know, a microcosm of, of, a, of a universe. Right. But if I have to touch certain pointers, there are certain things that attracted me, which I found common values and inspirations, which I felt... You know, this guy's talking to me. Mm-hmm. You know, he's fulfilling my my void. He's fulfilling my 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 my, my dreams, kinda. So whether it was whether it was the type of chizik that I found in this forum or the mahalach of what the pointers that they expressed, which was important, which mitzvah is basimcha or his brother do of talking to Hashem, bringing in the concept of godliness into a very realistic, natural, real way of life, instead of some mythical, uh, alleg- allegorical concept that was only 2,000 years ago when we just have to mesmerize that, and although it's true, you know, but... But the more you start living it, the more you start connecting to it, and then you start mesmerizing. And that, so, 
Breslov kind of brought things of stories that I always grew up and listening to, to Mila Bashem and inspirations of Big Gedolim into my own life, you know, whether it's their struggles and how they conquered it and how, how, how they grew up, you know, to my, you know, even bigger struggle, uh, I mean, like farther away struggles. Right, right, right. But also places where I started believing in myself that, oh, you also have very common ground with what you're learning the whole day. And I think the first thing is when, when, I, when I landed in the physical Israel, the first time when I was 14 years old, my father took me, for like blame about Shimon, started seeing, whoa, you know, whatever I learned, you know, I had this idea of a mountain. To me, it was the Catskills, you know. Hmm. And now I'm seeing a whole new idea of physical mountains, but this mountain is actually the place where Avram Yitzchak is. Wow. And, well, you know, once I'm there, I'm starting to believe, wow, I do have, you know, it's, it's real. It's very real to me. So in that idea, Breslov brought the, the you know the, the avoid of tzaddikim of what what you know what our rabbis are demanding from us to achieve in a very real way of connecting that you have a chance to achieve something higher than you always thought you you know you, you only can only reach the higher you can reach more you can you can be wider and also the fact that you you saw all types of jews finding the same meaning it just makes everything be very real because you can say uh, this is you know you brought up in this community this thing you know this works for you this is what it is but when you see a person from a whole different culture also connecting to the same light it just makes it very colorful like a painting you know right 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 it makes it it gives a lot of depth so to me this is what it brought into it, it gave me a lot of depth it gave me a lot of meaning it, it brought in you know all of the teachings that I had growing up into a very realistic a lot of hope Give me a lot of hope. Wow. So I want to switch gears um, because we're going to get back to these ideas when we talk about your yeshiva, but I want to talk about your, your music a little. First of all, when you were younger, did you anticipate going into a music career or not really? So I did grow up, I, I did grow up in a musical, I, I grew up in a musical family, um, meaning to say back then it wasn't very in style. You know, just to show off. You you know how to sing? Go show off. Even today, in the communities, you know, you know, in Williamsburg and more the Hamish communities, a lot of people are gonna restrict re restrain themselves from being in the public eye, even though they have the talents. Whether you're a chef, whether you're uh, or an artist, it's not a cover digger thing, you know, to come out as you're an artist. There are. I mean, today more than, you know, how it was 20 years ago. Right. I remember me growing, growing up, the only musician, um, musicians, you wouldn't find Hasidic musicians playing at weddings. Um, if you would, you would have to wear a tie and, you know, like a nice fedora just to... Like tuck in the payas. Tuck in the payas because that's, you know. I remember when Freilach started playing with their payas out, it was like, what? like wow like what's what's that about and people love it but everything changed today right but still you know i have people in my family who can sing very nice but they're just not comfortable it's you know kind of prestigious it's not what they're it's not how they were brought up that this, you know this is something prestigious according to their values and so on so they would refrain from doing that. So did you get sucked so, into it? So, yeah, I, I would I would say yes because although I I did stand out from you know my You're tall. from my immediate fan. No, I'm talking about. <laughs> I know, I know, I'm making jokes. <laughs> right, my voice was you know I had a probably a sweeter voice mm -hmm. or whatever. I'm not gonna go into this, but but the point is I did stand out, mm -hmm. and I did sing. You know, at family occasions here, like weddings and so on. But I, I mean, it was a self-understood thing that when, once you, you know, you once you get bar mitzvah, you kind of like forget about what happened and just right. Like you know, you're a man now. Move okay, on. Like, yeah, not wearing play pants on Shabbos kids. anymore. Yeah, you're could, you know, kids. And... You know, kids play with right. you know with bicycles outside. Once you're, you know, you're like you know, you're serious. You know, right. So. Um, Basically, 
that kind of left my brain. And even though when I was when I was nineteen twenty and I, I was in Israel in yeshiva and you know we're spending time with friends, I did have a guitar and I, you know I started exploring my music uh, world. I did play songs here and there, but I never pursued it as a career or something that I would like to, you know, get into versus, you know, getting married and making a pranas of, you know, getting into uh, whatever a Kavadik pranas will be. So when I when I did get married, I pursued a career of, uh, you know, whatever I thought it will, you know, grow. I started in construction, you know, something in like that. And mm-hmm. then the 2008 crash came and there was literally no work. And a friend of mine suggested that, you know, if you go to the studio at night and you sing in choir, you can make, you can get paid equally of how you, you make when you work with your uh, construction thing. And I was like, wow, I only have to sing. And I, <laughs> and that kind of is really what, you know, what, you know, is how, how I got started because the studio, the guy, the engineer saw that. I have more than just, you know, a choir singer and he recommended me to to you know, to Naftali Schnitzel, which at later you know, later that year took took me on as a project. And um you know, I started singing, you know, solo on certain uh, albums that which came out and I got suge- I got recommended to sing in Sheer Choir. And from there on, I you know, started, you know, I saw it's good money. And um, were, were you like constantly debating about like even when you were doing it or maybe even now of like this idea? That no, once I, once I broke the ice, I was you're t- fine, totally infused with that. I, I yeah, I, I until now, I can't see myself without that. I mean, like you feel like it's a part of you, meaning like, yeah, you, uh, you I, are synonymous with being a singer. Exactly. This is this is just something that I'm born to do and it's not that I'm looking for the biggest uh, stages or you know the biggest crowds I'm fine just being in my studio here and just singing you know that's something that I enjoy doing is there what what is there maybe a song or a style that you lean towards I mean obviously it's a kind of like a mood question exactly (laughs) it's like what's your favorite song it depends when right it's like I love pizza but at the you know, seven in the morning, I'm not interested in a slice of pizza, so. Exactly. So, um, style, I would definitely say in general, it's it's always soul. You know, it's always soul. Whichever genre is going that, um, even well, you know, I have a, pro- honestly, I have a problem when I record any fast stuff, you know, like any happy songs, I constantly have, you know, the guy that is involved over there, whether it's the engineer or the producer, will tell me he was always going to have to push me towards, like, smile, you know, like, mm. g- give me some groove, you know, <laughs> because I always get into the meaning of it and right. the feel of it, and I get lost into the in, into the soul of it. So that's definitely something that, and and you know, people always this this is the regards that I get feedback from people that you know your songs are so you know there's so much heart in it yeah a lot of emotion a lot of emotion in it and that's probably the only place where you know i have the capability of just you know throwing out my emotions um dang it i wish i could sing i i never like (laughs) no you're like being it's interesting you're you're able to be your truly expressive self when it comes to so much so much that um when I sing, I consciously kind of like not aware of what's going on around me. Although, I mean, part of my job is to right, be right, aware, to be aware. And to see. So from a business perspective, I do do my thing of analyzing mm-hmm. of Proud. what the people want right. from me in order to give them back. But naturally, you just get into I'm that. consciously way more into the singing, not even technique, just in the soul of the singing. Then of what's going on around and around and Could, you know, people, yeah yeah sorry no you go on I was saying that you know part part of the thing that people always wonder like how are you just out of there you're not embarrassed not you're not nervous and so on it's like first of all people don't know that you know in most most concerts performance you will have like a light shining on you which you can't see anything yeah you kind of blind <laughs> you're like you. blind 
but it just helps you. But if naturally you're a paranoid type of guy who is constantly, you know, busy of what you know, you're not you're not into your song. It's not possible to sing. Right, right. So I I literally before I was on the phone with Rabbi Feiner, and he told me he's gone over to you on two occasions to ask you what you're thinking about with the song Ribona Ribona Rebine Rebine. Like and he said he said that he even said sometimes he needs to fall asleep to like list with that in his mind. Um, like, what are you thinking when you're singing these songs? Like, are you thinking of the words or are you thinking of? It's interesting. Uh, this is not the answer to your question, but I'll get to that. Sure. Just, um, I've had many times that I sang with Avram Fried. This particular song, we have this thing that he does Ribain Halamim Yadati, and I do Ribain, which is kind of like. Like he do, you do rebound, I'll do my rebound. So, you know, and I had, I think, two or three times that he couldn't hold it in. He said, not upon good deeds can we depend, although we are not worthy. What do you mean we're not worthy? Of course we're worthy. And that's <laughs> and that's a Chabad right. thing, that a Yid is Yechida. A Yid comes from the highest place, you know. And um, it, there's always these... Uh, fights between Sadiqim of does Hashem need us? Do we need Hashem? And so on. Of course Hashem needs us. You know, it's a malchus, you know. It's it's the the kingdom needs the people to promote the kingdom. Right. If not he, so let's not get distracted. I just sang in uh, Las Cabos uh, this past um Chalamoid, and I sang with Ede with uh Marcus Marcus Brothers. Yeah, interview them. And um, so also after this concert, he came over to me and he's like, I have one question. Oh, they're very, Why? they're <laughs> such a hard interview. They are like very like in a playful way, but I'm not surprised. That is very their personality. <laughs> Why are you saying and we're not worthy? We are worthy. <laughs> so by now I just need to put it out there. The concept is not, it's not that we're not worthy that I'm putting ourselves down. It's that what we are getting from Hashem, the 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 chesed, you know, the the shine that we're that we're, we're being shined shined upon, the the abundance that that we are getting from Hashem, is not because we gave you this and you're giving me that. That's the explanation. The explanation is it's not it's not because we're worthy. That's why we're getting it. Even if we wouldn't be worthy. He would still give because he just loves to give. Hmm. He's just a giving, loving being. Right. God. Right. So that's the expression. The expression is we're so thankful that even we're we're great. We're amazing. You know, we're <laughs> we're your love of your life, you know, we're we're, we're your soulmate. But even that's that the amazingness is that we are soulmate not because we deserved it. We soulmate because just because you chose us mm. to be your soulmate, or because there's love. Love doesn't need. It's not a give and take. Right. Love Wait, is just, it's a good point because when someone bases love on something, let's say they're they're only attracted to how someone right. looks. If the looks change, then they don't love them anymore. Right. So it's like love has to come from a place of. It, uh, there's no reason. It's because I'm choosing you and I'm being full force. That's the chesed. That's the chesed of giving. And 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 the holiness of that is is that it's 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 a never it's 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 not based. It's not based. It doesn't get stuck. It's something that goes around and around. It's it's just a thing that flows. It's so I love the way you're putting it because now it makes like this idea of chesed. Again, we're human, so we always like make ch- like a cheshman right. and, and a calculation. But like according to this idea, it's like no, no, no. The person who you're helping it, it doesn't need there's no calculation. You're giving because you're giving, right. not because of anything and, else. And and that's that's basically what the difference between you know talking about you know most of the I wouldn't say most, but I say a lot of the nun, what 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 they would call love songs. In the lyrics, you would find a lot of things. I love you because of what you mean to me, of what you give to me, and so on, which is really not love. Right. That's not love. That's just being selfish. Right. Right. It's you know, the more you give, the more you're gonna get. So, <laughs> that's that's taking. Although love can mean taking. You know, a lot of people don't realize that 
you know, especially when someone, when someone is meant to give, you know, there, there's the mashpia and the makabal, there's the, mm-hmm. the person who will always is meant to, you know, like a teacher, a preacher, someone who gives information. And then there's a Talmud who gets information. Like you could find in a marriage, you know, you know, there's, there's, there's someone like the man and the, and the woman. And of course, there's always a giving back. Mm-hmm. You know, they, you know that's that's what is the beauty of, of a relationship that it right. never ends. Right, compliments and then uh, compliments. Right. But the point of 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 uh, of of um, I lost my chain of thought. Talking about love, uh, um, compatibility, uh, giving. Just rewind the uh, uh, Shmuel Younger. No, oh, two no, back, no, two no, back. No. Sorry, 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 sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Thirty so seconds. Uh, the Geisha songs. For those listening, we're doing this at like one in the morning, so uh, after yeah. a very full day for each of us. Anyways, the point is that Hashem, you know, we're, we're thankful that we are aware that the Chesed that we're getting from Hashem is not dependent on how good we are and 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 how great we did that and then oh you see i have this connection with this guy so i'm safe hmm. this is just who hashem is right. Hashem is a giving thing it's, it's giving god it's a holy thing that's what we're thankful for so ribbon is so beyond because it doesn't get stuck in details never it's just an ultimate it's like a bracha chreine. it's like everything so i you know happened to be i had a few years ago that one of my Talmidim got engaged and um, his engagement, his, his, uh, his L'chaim um, was an hour before a gig. So I had really had time to go in to just say Mazel Tov and run. I was so overtaken because I had a very close connection to this, uh, this particular student. I felt so great. And the first, sang, the first song that I sang was Riboy. Hmm. And I had this musician who, who asked me, you know, Barry, I gotta tell you, you're an amazing, amazing actor. You know, I've heard you sing the songs, you know, tens of times. You always make the people believe like it's your first time you're singing it. And I'm like, thank you for the compliment. <laughs> but let me tell you something. It's not about the song. And it can never bore me because it's it's the words. He's like, wait a minute, what what does the word mean? So I start telling him, he's like, oh. oh. And a lot of people connect to the words. You know, the tune is nice. But I find that a lot of people connect to it, and, you know, and, and they, you know, each to its own. You know, some people get stuck on that we're not worthy. That's their avayda. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Right. And some people get stuck on the kaseinu. And some people, you know? But it's definitely something that spoke to a lot of a lot of people. I have I have had many stories that literally changed people's lives. Do you do you have um ask Shwaki this and he had a few answers, but one answer is good. Is there is there do you have a story of like someone coming up to you and being I'm sure this happened a lot of times, but like one unique story that you remember that they say something about your music or or hearing you perform or a specific song that helped them during a dark moment in their life? I have had many, many, and this is always like, kind of like the, you know, like the shockers that, you know, that wake you up like, wow, there's something way bigger right. than, than what you're just, right. you're yeah, like I'm my to me, it's just, you know, it's my, it's part of my life, I'm just doing my thing, you know, right. and then you hear this, and this person is really, really is like sharing like a big, deep part of his life, and you're like, wow, like it really means it, like it's. <laughs> I didn't realize it. Well, wow. there, there's there's some. Uh, so what? Get, can you give us a, uh, something? So I'll tell you what. Right now, I'm thinking of three stories, and all of it are like very personal, like to these people, and kind of. Could you change the details? I'm 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 trying. Like okay. So the most simple one. It's just, you know, it just shows you that, you know, even a simple story like that, you know, now imagine like the deep ones. So at one of my albums that probably most people don't even know, on my album Ben Melech, there's a song called Geitzach Vashen, Go Wash. Mm-hmm. It's, it's, the song is based on Si'i Yedaychem Kodesh, Varchis Hashem. So there's a, there's a, 
pasik that we, you know, some of us say. Wash the hands. You, you pick your hands up. But as far as we say, potech et yadecha and the whole thing, but by chasidim, you say, se'u yadechem kodesh. You know, like, pick up your holy hands. Hevorchus Hashem and bless Hashem. And then you say, baruch Hashem and Hashem and Hashem and Hashem and Hashem. So, the song is see the go go to go wash. So basically, I I did that song. So whenever I come to a like a wedding or a sheva brachas or a mitzvah, and the first thing would be go wash, I should have like a starter. It's a good and it goes. It's it's like a big band type of you know song. Right. So to me, this song is just fun. You know, it's it's you know usually the first song that you sing. You know, people are not into. People are not involved. You know, it's either it's you know the the att- ones attention grabber. Yeah, it's, it's 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 like easy. It's easy, but you know, even in a concert where people watch you, they're not into it. They just you know they observe right. details of you know okay who's the band right how's, right how's the right. sound how's the props and they, nobody gets into it. right they're adjusting they're adjusting, and which is which is a very important po- pointer for performers and you know the speakers that that in the beginning don't expect people to get emotional you know and that's why you should always start you know if you're a speaker you should always start with something comical and so on that's not threatening right it's, it's just they can connect to it but it's not deep um uh so so see that because i figured i'm gonna do something more bubbly something that i enjoy so i'm not you know, conscious of people not checking in and so on. So to me, this song is just, it's, it's about me having a good time. I, I never thought this song could be an inspiration. Happened to be, I would say it was during COVID, which was, it was the beginning. Of, so it was probably a year ago. Yeah, a year ago. And this ultra Hasidic guy comes, to, like Satmer, with a big plastic, a big hat, comes to me and he says, uh, Barry, I gotta tell you something. You have a minute. I'm like, yeah. You know, you 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 saved my life. I look at him, like I'm glad you're talking to me. Like, what what do you mean? I'm I saved your life. What what type of influence do I have on you? He's like, yeah. You see, so I am. I grew up like this, and then at some point, to me, things didn't make sense, and I like very like in a very hidden you know struggling place i kind of dropped the things that i felt that i you know that makes no sense or whatever in his you know and he wouldn't be medayak and kashrus you know that wasn't the, you know and he wouldn't even make brachas before he would eat and he wouldn't wash and he, you know and for him this was like he kind of like closed the lights we can only imagine, you know, how you know how broken, how empty a person, you know, has to be when he goes through these thoughts and these, you know, these experiences, you know, and while he's, you know, fully, you know, with the garb and so on, you know. But he always, you know, he always bothered him. But he never had that, you know, that jump starter, you know, that shocking machine who just woke him up and put him back into his seat, you know. So he says one day he 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 took something he took some sandwich he says I don't know exactly where I got whatever the point it wasn't wasn't very kosher let's just put it that way <laughs> um, I was about to rebel I'm gonna eat no washing no nothing and he goes into his car and you know the music this song starts playing <laughs> you know this was the seat. it wasn't his car it was a friend's car this song to him this was just a message for wow. him to. Like a shgocha pratis of geitzach vashen. Like, what are the chances? That right. I'm, I'm eating. I'm rebelling now, and this is a. It went so deep into his conscious of shgocha pratis. It literally, like he said, if his fingers were numb. He said, my fingers started being like, I felt tingling in my fingers. And he just he dropped the sandwich. And he just ran into the shul. He started crying. You know, he felt everything woke up in him. And he said, you know, it spiraled back. It just put me back into my seat. You know, this <laughs> just put me back. And today, you know, uh, you know, I'm more or less, you know, a healthy guy. 
you know. So to me, it was like it was like so unexpected, and it was like it just. And th- there was nothing in this song that I sang that I was like, oh, you know, one day there's going to be a guy that's not going to make a bracha. It, it, it's just siyata I feel so, I feel so blessed that you know, Hashem gave me the opportunity to have, you know, to be the shliach, to do this connection of this, you know, to ignite this spark. It's loyal tzit kaseinu. You know, this, this is this is when I'm singing loyal tzit kaseinu. Like I really don't deserve this. You know, but you know, which chus do I have that I have such a chus? And you know, I, I've, I've had even crazier stories. Like literally, you know. I feel like you should make a, a do a song about like every Avera. Then anyone listening would be like, "Oh my gosh!" Like <laughs> if they happen to be doing that Avera. So that's what I'm saying. If if, if I do it attentionally, right, then it wouldn't work. Probably, right? Or maybe it will. I don't know. But I also had this crazy story. A guy that you know, he was basically um, he was going down, mm-hmm. and um, his father was just being very nice and loving to him. He his father had a lot of money, and he. And he gave him just his black American Express, you know, just... And he was throwing these crazy parties. Without getting into, like, details, details, he tried to express... To, to, he had a relationship with the non-Jew. And he he was in a very good place. He was throwing a crazy party on an island in Miami in some celebrity's house. And he wanted to impress that non-Jew that, you know, the Jews still got it. You know, I can show you something that is very unique and so on. So he started playing my song, Riba. Hmm. And that, I guess, that was the moment where he got into it. And, and the person that he had a relationship with just felt, like, so disgusted, like, because it was all fake. That person only wanted, you know, his connections, his money and so on. And that person, you know, like, just came out of him, like, ah, this is disgusting music, like, just, drop it you know this is <laughs> stupid you know you're just tripping for him it was like you know like 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 a knife stabbing in his heart and he's like wait a minute he started realizing that this person is just taking advantage hmm. this and he threw that person out, out of the car and he just drove down the block and he went and he started listening to the song and he got into a very you know spiritual place he went back to this party. He shut down all the lights. He's like everybody leave, you know. Everybody's just using me, abusing me. To him, this was like a wake up call. That what's after that? You know, after the parties, after everything, it's everything fake, you know. And really, what's meaningful for him is you know just the connection and the meaning. So he said that this song Ribbon, this was Ribbon. This is what really brought him into like woke him up and. That's really beautiful. Yeah. It's, these are really nice. Um, I would listen on my way back. I feel like I need to listen to Riva, but we're doing a sphere now, so I'm going to have to wait. We'll be right back with my episode with Barry Weber. But first, I want to say this podcast, this episode is a memory of Shimon David Ben Yaakov Shleima. It is also a memory of Miriam Sara Bas Yaakov Moshe, their Neshamash and Heaven Aliyah. And I also want to tell you about you probably know what I'm going to say. Yidflix. Yes, yes. I keep. Why do I keep on plugging them? Why do I keep on pushing them? Because they're incredible. They do good stuff, and their content on their website, yidflix.com, it's just a breath of fresh air. Just good Jewish Torah videos. I wish growing up I had this stuff. I was like stuck with Sesame Street and Mr. Rogers, which was great, but it wasn't, and it isn't, the, the basic you know, Torah values that you want your kids hearing. And while you might not say it's bad to watch Sesame Street and Mr. Rogers, you would agree that it's great to have content made by Yidin for Yidin to help your children develop. And not just children, your teens, your tweens, and adults. I I have many friends that love watching Yidflix, love using Yidflix, and it's so inexpensive each month. Try it out. Go to the show notes, yitflix.com. And now back to my conversation with Barry. Okay, so I want to, I, I think we could talk about your, you and music literally for another five hours. And we'll, we'll, we'll bring back at the end your new album. Uh, but I want to transition to talking about your yeshiva. I, I, I think, you know, there's a lot of singers out there, but, and, and everyone has their like own unique abilities, but I find it fascinating that you, are a singer and also Rosh Hashiva. 
Uh, maybe in the history of Klai Yisrael it's happened before, but none that I know of. Most of the times it's a Rosh Hashiva that likes to sing. Right, exactly. <laughs> right. Over here it's a singer that, that is a Rosh Hashiva. So, I think so by now I like it. How'd that happen? So how that happened is very naturally, hmm. um, most of the singers are putting a lot of, uh, uh, I would say, effort in being mesameach, you know, Klal Yisrael, especially the, you know, the, 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 you know, the struggling ones, and we have the opportunity many times to go into the hospitals to really change a person who is struggling with, you know, with their health to, you know, to lift up their spirits. So, before I was a shiva, I, you know, made myself as a chayv, you know, that was my duty to, you know, to go at least once a week, that I dedicate some time, you know, Hashem is giving me the spotlight, you know, just, you know, just to show a little appreciation, kind of, give back, it's to go to people who are nebuch, unfortunately, you know, sick in their beds, and they're, you know, just sad in a place of darkness, and, you know, to try to bring in some spirit. Um... So, you know, one of the calls would be hospital and it would be, you know, some, you know, sometimes in, in, in jails, you know, going in jails. And so one day someone who opened a yeshiva for struggling teens or not even struggling teens at the time was just, you know, he found a group of boys that had common ground who they weren't accepted back in yeshivas and they were upset and they weren't going to fit in you know and, that, and they kind of created their own uh group Chabura, with you know with you know two, two people leading that like some someone taking the role as a chief and someone as the, you know as the administrator and so on and he felt very close to them so he figured that he's going to spoil them by bringing entertainers to you know to, to brighten up and to make it more entertaining. So he was constantly coming to me, maybe you come to see Shiva, maybe you play some, you know, some music to them, you speak to them, it's going to make them feel good. So I took the offer one day, and we had a very close, a very good connection. I spoke, it wasn't really about, you know, like, oh, I sing this, I sing that, you know, it was a very inspirational talk. I was going into more of, you know, what music is about to me, you know, we're in, in a spiritual sense, you know, certain chords, you know, how it brings out certain feelings, you know, I, go, I was going in a little into the science of music, mm -hmm. connecting that to, to Hasidus. Um, so they were very, for them, it was like, you know, it was very, uh, you know, it was something, uh, it's eye-opening and amazing. And he constantly, you know, asked me to come back and again and again and again until I started being a regular over there. I came once a week. And uh, at some point, he said, why don't you do, do like two times a week and three times a week? And before you know it, I was really involved. And after a few months, uh, the newsman came and he couldn't just do like, it. Was, you know, it wasn't his thing. He wasn't a shiva. He, just, he just found these group of boys. He helped them out. But he got into debt and he couldn't, he couldn't see himself continuing that making a pranasa. He was just a fresh you know, married guy wanted to pursue a career and so on so he was giving up I couldn't take that <laughs> you can't you know I invested you know these I can't let them hang now so I told him listen I understand you know you, you know you're working hard I'll help you out financially and I'll you know I'll do this He's like no I can't uh, I can't breathe so it was Safira so I told him just take a break for a few days I'll babysit them you know <laughs> and, uh, so that, that's how it started, and, and he, he never, never came back. He never came back. <laughs> <laughs> so um, for the past, I'm doing this now seven years. I would say for the past five years, I was kind of like in that zone of. I always fin f felt like okay, once I'm done with this first batch, I'm just moving on. Right. right? But I was as I was going into it, I just got dragged in more and more because. Um, it actually worked, you know. I, I actually had an impact on some of the boys. Not I'm not I'm not talking about myself. You know, I invited people who, you know, who we had common ground. People who would love to help out. 
you know, these young boys and inspire them and do it L'Shem Shemaim and so on. And it was such a holy, beautiful movement. It just, I just couldn't say no. I couldn't. But did it feel couldn't like, out. like, I don't think you ever anticipated being a Rosh Shiva and it's a unique type of yeshiva. Did you ever feel like, you know, this isn't for me? Like, yeah, I tried doing it and helping out, but did you feel like this isn't... The, yeah, I'm try I'm helping, but like this isn't my role. Yes, I you know, my 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 selfish self would say that. Hmm. Uh yeah. Yeah, what what about your Shiva and and I would be uncomfortable until at this point it's kind of like calling me Barry, you know, it just sunk, sank into me. I don't look I don't look at myself as you know, Rosh Hashiva. I look at myself as a singer that is also capable of doing the role of Rosh Hashiva. Mm. I believe that if not of my singing, I would have that attraction uh, and I wouldn't have that influence and I wouldn't have that uh, energy and and reason to, you know, to that chayas to go on. So I very much... I'm focused on preserving my singing should be number one. Although singing itself is, you know, being a mashpia. I mean, what my music is not about pencil cases and rubbers. You know, right. it's 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 about connection and meaning and chizuk and you know, why am I doing this interview? Why are you doing this? You know, you want to give chizuk to people. You know, you want to inspire people mm. and that that's what music does i mean i enjoy it right you know? if not if well, I, you're if, human you gotta enjoy if it. if i don't have the fuel yeah. if, if i don't you know you do then it. there's nothing going on but it's actually very rewarding and i'm very thankful that hashem has given me this platform to do that but the same thing as yeshiva this is how i look at it you know my my goal is really to give and to inspire when as long as i have the capability and in the beginning you know it you know as I was going into the first, you know, the first three years, I looked at it as, okay, I have a batch of boys that Hashem sent them to my hand and I'm just going to do my shlichus and I'm just, once I'm done, I'm moving on. But then my Rebbe told me no. <laughs> Did you, who's your Rebbe, by the way? Um, he doesn't like to be oh. exposed. Okay. Because in Breslev, the idea of person, you know, fame, is a very harsh thing you know if any person should be only all the kavod goes to Hashem so he asked me in the past that whenever I, you know, I'm talking about a job I should say uh, the Amshanava hmm. because Amshanava does Kedev and that stuff but whoever knows me knows who my right. Rebbe is right, okay. um, it's Google one of the Talmidim of Reb Nachman got it I can got say it. that um, and he lives in Yerushalayim hmm. It's a very special hit in honor. No, I'm kidding, I'm kidding, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. Yeah, no, it sounds like um, a good Rebbe who, who really doesn't want any attention. So, right. So um, you've been successful with these guys. What do you attribute that success to? And I'm sure not every single time, but what are you doing different so, than other places? So as 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 was saying that the first three years I looked at it as, as something that Hashem sent my way and just do your shlichus, you know, don't ignore your hardships kinda or your challenges, just do it. And then move on. Don't think you're you know, don't think you're a Rosh Hashiva, you're not. You know, don't push yourself where you don't belong, kinda. But then, you know, these two two things which Corley my Rebbe said, you know, you're not you know, as long as you have a boy is reaching out to you it's your duty to, you know, give him a yeshiva. Hmm. And from the other aspect, you know, all these feedback from from the parents or from the people who were involved with these boys who they saw, you know, tremendous change in them, you know, for them, you know, growing and moving on and so on, that just, it gave me so much meaning, which, you know, just uh, from even from a selfish place, I couldn't ignore that. But... Then I then I realized, you know, that being that uh, attraction from, from these boys are, you know, the Barry Weber, you know, the singer, you know, 
famous, whatever, you know, goes into that category, the singing or whatever. Although they all, you know, they were looking for a place of acceptance and love, which, you know, this is basically, you know, what I gave, what I'm giving them. But I realized that it's really the one-on-one -on -one connection between the, you know, the, the, the student and me that can really have an impact. Although at some point I had a staff of 20. Really? Yeah. And now it was that big. Yeah, I, at some point I had a staff of 20 and I had a budget of $60,000 a month. That's a lot. Yeah. And, and you're singing. And I was singing. And, I, and you have a family. And I have a family. Right. And, yeah, and so it, it was very, very overwhelming. And, of course, that's why I had a staff of 20 because, you know, I I, I needed to be able to to move, to sing and these shouldn't be ignored. All right. of these, All of these things that needs to be taken care of. But... It helped, but, it, it, you know, it, it wasn't... If I would spend with them one day, just a one-on-one, -on -one, it would be more than, like, two months with the professional. Hmm. So I realized that it's it's not, you know, it's not... It's, it's not the, you know, it's, 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 it's not the... Yeah. It's not about how much I have. It's about, you know... It's not the quantity, it's the quality. There you go. It's, it's, it's not the quantity, it's the quality. And I kind of narrowed it down to a, like a smaller group of, you know, that we're and, you know, less hours, kind of making them self-sufficient, kind of. And at the, same, at the same time, I have more chance of, uh, you know, of, uh, um, of uh, revisiting, you know, the students that left my place, who so moved on and helping them out in, in their journeys where they're now. Which is also very important. Uh, it's you know the past seven years, um, you know there's uh, there's uh, I would say probably close to a hundred Talmidim that went through my yeshiva, and many of them moved on from their stage where they were, and they were ready to integrate into you know in a different society or in a workplace and a workforce and so on, but they still need guidance and they don't have a community where they belong. And me reaching out to them even once a month has a very huge impact. So I'm more focused on that. So back to your question, really, and what every person needs is somebody really to care. Lubavitch Rebbe says that what, what, is, what, what is love? Love is every person has its song. Every song, every person has its beauty. And when that person forgets the song, and you're the one who's reminding them that song, that's true love. Mm. And I once heard a beautiful, beautiful story from Y.Y. Y. Jacobson about a, a Lubavitcher Yid who came out from, from uh, Russia, from from under the Iron Curtain, and he was kind of like in his in himself, he wasn't nobody, but he composed a song that got picked up, you know, in the Fabrengans and. They would sing it, and this was for him like his holiest thing. You know, his you know his his Fabrenging song is became his identity. You know, until then he was Moshe Yukel. Now he's that song, you know, that Fabrenging song. When he got older, um, he uh, he started he 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 started forgetting. He he how's it called uh, dementia, and he. He started forgetting stuff. He st stopped recognizing people, and he ended up in an uh, old age home. And uh, next to him is Bregesh Eshla Roms. And um, there was a guy who used to come visit him. He never recognized him, but was one Erevim Kipper. Uh, this guy, Lubavitch Chassid, figured, you know what, he's going to uplift this guy. He's going to take him to Lubavitch Rebbe. Because Lubavitch Rebbe would give Erevim Kipper, he would give, it would be big lines, he would give every Chassid of his a piece of cake honey cake, you know, for have a sweet ear. So he figured he's going to take it to Lubavitch Rebbe. It's kind of going to wake him up from his sleep or whatever. So he took him in the line, and he goes to Lubavitch Rebbe, and Lubavitch Rebbe recognizes him, but it sees that he's a, you know, he's a little worn down. So Lubavitch Rebbe doesn't really remember. He asks him, what's your name again? And this person looks at Lubavitch Rebbe, he has like, like somebody just hit him in his face or something, like, like, and Lubavitcher Rebbe realizes that he's obviously not responding and that he has dementia. 
So Lubavitcher Rebbe started singing a song that they sing with Fabrenians. And in the beginning, this person was just like, you know, look, you know, just, you know, looking at the walls and the ceiling, like not connecting dots. So Lubavitcher Rebbe finished the song, and he saw he's not responding. He started singing this song again. Hmm. Second time around, clicked. And boom, suddenly this guy sees himself. He's in front of his Rebbe. You know, his connection to Hashem and his song, his identity. And he puts this dots again, he wakes him up and he's like, <sighs> he starts going into shape, you know, he starts, his face gets, you know, gets, uh, you know, gets uplifted. And he, he starts getting like a Yiddish, the cover of his Rebbe and he's like, and, and somebody says, it's Ervin Kippur and he's, he starts saying whatever you say, Ervin Kippur. And Bab Shreb wishes him he should have Arichas Yamim Shanim and the guy goes away and he goes back into his, you know, into his. This is love. Every person has this spark, this beautiful place, this place where he has his identity. And sometimes, for a shorter time, sometimes even a longer time, a person gets into a position or into a place, and you can find it by students, by, you know, struggling, you know, people. Especially in this, this you know, this dark galas where you're 13, 14, you start up, opening up your eyes to a whole world. You know, your brain cells start to expand. You start seeing, oh, there's a me. Who am I? Okay, this is what that Rebbe told me. This is what my parent told me. And, you know, suddenly all these dots come together and he finds himself sometimes in a very dark place, sometimes in a very good place. And you see that he's like he has a motive. He has an ambition. He has something you know, good to look forward. And sometimes, if a person was going through, you know, certain abuses, you know, certain negativity in his life, starts hitting him, and he wants to find, you know, a place of pleasure of survival. But he's so stuck, and he forgets his song. And all he needs is a little love. He needs someone to remind him his song. And that's basically what I'm trying to do. What I'm trying to do is for the boys is really like even a simple level, they come in, you know, a compliment. Oh, you look so amazing. Uh, wow, it's so wonderful to have you here. Oh, wow, I'm so happy you came here today. And wow, I'm so much looking forward to today. And just, you know, just giving him a song back. Mm. You know, finding a little Nikuda Teva, finding a little, you know, spark of his that is really there he's just you know it's just he just doesn't find it nobody you know people were not busy telling him where that the spark is and that's what they really another spark another spark another spark another spark another spark until boom it just goes on and i found it in in you know in in the unexpected places you know it's like you always think okay i did this 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 it naturally it should work and it's not working hmm. And then suddenly, out of the blue, he just boom woke up. Now I can't get a credit because <laughs> he wasn't in my vicinity, hmm. he wasn't in my time lapse or whatever it is. It's all these little sparks. It's all these little, you know, positivities that you, up. you know, and and it's, it's it's such a big lesson. You can see it in all the ways, you know, when somebody gets patched, you know, when somebody gets, you know, you get a patch, you move on. You get another patch, you move on, and then you like after your twentieth, you're like. Boom, it breaks you. What happened? It's just, you know, another spark, a spark, a spark of negativity that broke you. And the same thing is with positivity. People think, like, I complimented this guy all the time. It's not helping. It's like, this guy needs a thousand compliments. He needs one million compliments. You don't know if you're the 900,000, 999. Mm -hmm. And just with this one thing is going to just spark him on and for life. That's amazing. Okay, so before we, we get to your your... Last album, I like to ask uh, some fun and interesting and different type of questions. First question is, there's 613 mitzvahs. Is there one mitzvah as of today that you feel like you connect with more than the other ones? It's like asking your favorite song. <laughs> <laughs> so no, but the, 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 that, the mood thing, so right now, as of right now. This moment. Yeah. This second. Yeah. We're living in this moment. those listening he's thinking deep in we're talking about love <laughs> how was Hashem I mean why are we even doing this why are we why are we 
you know, expanding our energy? Why are we igniting our energy in this subject? We could have talked, you know, we, we could have talked about, you know, food and uh, anything else. Right. There's a lot to talk but about. But this is something that has value because it's it's something that you know just perfects people and puts them in a holy place and uh makes the, wor- the world a better place okay i'm gonna i'm gonna ask you another mood related type of question <laughs> uh but it's a little easier i think <laughs> you know no it's it, that's a beautiful <laughs> well that's not a mitzvah but you're talking about a mitzvah hi uh, it's honestly you could define it how oh. you want like i'm easy though chesed <laughs> Olam Chesed Yibana. That's what I'm thinking tonight. Tonight is the Yatsa Vir Pshaya. Right. Right. You know, people are kind of not handling the fact that people are so into food. But for some people, you know, just get out of your box. And if you're uncomfortable with this, just look at some people. Some people are willing to go two o'clock at night out of their bed to comfort and just go and help, you know, as, as a paramedic and go and get dressed and run out in the streets and just help a person who's sick. You wouldn't do it, but some person, that's person who his frequency is in that zone and that's what he's meant to do and he's doing it. And we should embrace that. And for that, if you find somebody who is an example of that, which we know, Reb Shaila, he was a Kaddish. You know, he was, uh, we know he's godless of Anova and, you know, he's in, in his worlds of, you know, of what some people would like, you know, that should be spoken more about. But I wouldn't call it simple level, you know. Avram Avini was the first of the Avis and his thing was giving chesed. You know, his, he would bring people into, matter no matter Goyim and Eden, you know, and bring them into his house and just give them food. You know, this this what the Torah says. Right. And Toyota is amazing, you know, Avoid is amazing, but that's also an area of, you know, it's one of the middles of Hashem. How do we connect to his, you know, character traits? And that's how you get more one with him, one, you know, more closer to him. And that's, you know, something that's being, you know, brought out very strongly and very um, physically in a sense. But it's really what's behind that. It's 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 the you know it's it's the connection uh, to people through food, you know, the connection to people through chesed, of, you know, giving. And we know today there's many organizations who would just go and you know and go you know behind the scenes and pay people's bills in the grocery and so on. I think that's the avoid of today. That's right. That's really beautiful. So my next question is: There's one person in history you can sit down with for an hour schmooze with them, ask them questions, who would it be? So if you would ask me if there would be one people I would want to meet, I would say one thing. If it would be if a person to sit down and talk. Well, okay, let's ask, I'm going to ask both. Who's me? Who would you want to meet? <laughs> who I would want to meet is other Mauritian. The first person. You know, it's just, you know, that's the furthest of my imagination, so... I mean, although, you know, Reb Nachman is also very far from my imagination, hmm. but that's the furthest. That's the that's the most. That's whom, me, and yeah, who would you want? Who I would wanna. Chapa shmuz with. Know more about. Chapa yeah. shmuz is more of a. <laughs> oh, you have like different answers for each one. Yeah, I'll, I'll tell you what because like you know, I'd like when, to look at that you, person. When you meet like somebody who that you meet somebody who you admire and, and really who somebody who is really worth you know looking up to you you know loss of words i know when i go into the room of my rabbi i lose my chain of thoughts and i uh, it's always every <laughs> it's funny because a real tzaddik i don't know if you had the merit of you know experiencing something like that when you go into the room of real tzaddik where there's there's a really presence of the shechina all of the issues fall away yeah it's, it's, it's true it's it's scary right. but so true and I could only imagine, I would say David the Melech, but I would only imagine, you know, you know, getting into one room in David the Melech, that would like burn my soul in a, <laughs> in a good way. Well, he's also a, a man of music. But like if I want to find a, a, 
uh, I don't know how you know like if I want to find an example of an example of an example of an example of you know common Shalom common ground I mean the Melech was the Merkava of Malchus I mean but you know just let uh, uh, but if I would you know find you know my personal life you know and someone's life you know, if I want to match it kind of like tick for tat, I would find a lot of compa- uh, you know, c- com- compatibility in the life of Dovod Melech. I would love to find compa- compatibility in the life of Dovod Melech, being that um, that um, your father tried killing you. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> I don't know your father. <laughs> that's, what, that's why I'm saying I'm so far, 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 right, far right. from right. No, emotional, emotional but shows. but but there's a lot of things. That um, he was the underdog. Do you feel like the, the underdog? underdog? Yes, I feel like you know I'm not you know like even even talking about not underdog as like that's something that I appreciate. I would mm. I would root for underdog. Right, right. Well, I, I think a lot of the guys in yeshiva are right. Underdogs. Exactly, like they're the guys that didn't fit into exactly. the other places, and that's something you're that like, I, hey, I'll right. I, I want to help exactly. you. Exactly, and the fact you know the connection with him to music, the right. connection of him with poetry, the connection of him. Of being so, you know, being so humble. Not that I am humble, but I I admire humble. Right, 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 right. I got Humbleness, that. and um, just all of but all of what we know about him is so wow. Is so wow. I mean, Shlomo Melech is wow. But right. It's just beyond me. It's just like he's too smart for me. <laughs> <laughs> it's like he's good. But Dovod Melech, although he's you know. We have no asaga, really. You know, it's it's so far from us. Right. You know. Uh, I just I just read the other day that in nineteen I wouldn't remember the exact year, but somewhere between nineteen forties and nineteen sixties, uh, when they changed the fuel type into what we're using it today for you know in, in the car, they connected you know the the you know the you know the chemicals that they connected in order for it to be sufficient and cheap and you know combustion whatever it, it would mm-hmm. work and it be you know it'd be efficient and so on they added um they added one component which is uh which is called lead and that lead is being released in our universe which made all of us dumber and you know scientists would go take samples in antarctica and all in all edges of the world they would dig down you know hundreds of feet down where matter you know where you know dirt or results of you know the the release of uh, lead in the world could have reached as much because because lead we're not going to go into a scientific no, yeah, conversation I, but the, but the Rosh point shiva singer and scientist <laughs> you know we're adding in to you can handle it, people. <laughs> but the point is that um, lead is the release of lead, uh, a lot of lead in the air, kills our brain cells, mm-hmm. and it makes us dumber. So we can only imagine of how smart we think we're today. Right. You know, if, all the other things. You know, you know how the people would think hundred years ago. We look at things what happened five hundred years ago in the dark ages. It's like. How? What? And when? Even where? Compare, let's say you, know, you and I, our generation to our like parents' generation, like with the cell phones and with the cell phones and all the video, like everything yeah. we have our attention. If someone's still yeah. listening, thank you for still listening. But like people are used to like eight second clips. Like right. we're and from the other hand, you see something like in the medieval times. Like you know, you see what Russia is doing in Ukraine and so on. It's like just, it just, it it just realistically makes you think that we know nothing and mm-hmm. we we cannot compare. You know, someone's story to someone's story, especially when you're talking about, you know, 3,000 years ago, 2,000 years ago. So, Dovod Melech is definitely something that is, um, um, you know, fascinated by and something that, you know, him speaking to Hashem from a Breslau perspective, you know, that's something that is very special. It's very rewarding and... Um, I find with that, uh, you know, connection with him, you know, you know, singing music, you know, having a fiddler, and many, 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 many more. <laughs> so. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah, we, I know there's a lot. <laughs> okay, so right before we talk about your album, I want to ask you, 
this is a question i don't really i didn't really ask it yet someone suggested i ask it it's it's a easy question to ask but it's probably a hard question to answer but i i really like doing these because i i i think people enjoy getting to know someone and i think people get to know someone when they feel connected because they're being authentic what's a struggle that you're going through today obviously you don't have to get too personal it could be something very intense but you could also do something that's very slight what's a struggle that you're working on to get over or something maybe you've gotten over what's like going through your head like we all have barriers and people i know people i know i always want to connect with like when you hear it like oh like they're also human and they're going through things well we're all human and we're all having struggles and the, you know it's it, it's just a good message to get out to people I mean, I don't have to be the one saying that, but you know, some people are just not thinking in that direction. As long as we're humans, we're struggling people. You know, the world is put together. Of, it's it's always two opposites. You know, whether it's day and night, whether it's you know, what it has to do with time, what it has to do with moods, what it has to do with you know, eating and feeling, you know, you know, whether desiring something and feeling satisfied, whether, whether it's moving on or, you know, appreciating what we have. In every aspect, there's always the opposite that attracts and that pushes you and that motivates you and so on and so on. So we need struggles to survive. And the more a person is working on himself, which is what we call it, you know, a tzaddik, the biggest struggles there are because this is what he's attracting this is what he's looking for and this is what he wants to conquer so everybody's struggling including myself so if 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 i'm understanding right you're you're you're, ask, you're asking me me as a singer you know what are, what are the struggles you could no you could honestly take the question however you want to answer it i think it's a hard question to like be vulnerable about so you could take it any direction you want, whether it's about singing, whether it's about your avoid this Hashem, whether it's it's practically you're like I don't know, like my my block is doing construction and uh, so difficult. let's let's you know let's let's divide it let's divide it into three things because you know the, everybody struggles in every area. You know people mm -hmm. struggle to get up in the morning. People, I mean myself. I'm gonna struggle tomorrow morning. <laughs> We're doing this so yeah. late. You know, yeah. If if you have if you have enough reason to get out of bed, then you know it's easy for you, right, to actually fight off that you know desire of, <laughs> of, of, of you know sleep. putting back yeah right. going back to sleep. Um, obviously, you know, eating a lot is not my struggle. Same, same here. <laughs> I, I'm going to you know me waking up. Um, happens to be me being a Rosh Hashiva helped me a lot um, getting my mornings in an order. I've had a big struggle of getting up being that I that I go to sleep late. You're a night person. I'm, I sing at night. Ah. I finish weddings 12 o'clock, sometimes 1 o'clock, and sometimes I travel from Lakewood and I arrive 3 o'clock, and sometimes I'm so tired in the way so I have to go to sleep and I arrive oh. 5 o'clock. Oh gosh, your poor family. So me getting up the next morning and getting to yeshiva, uh, oh, not getting yeshiva would allow me to sleep in, but me being yeshiva, just people I mean, waiting. If you don't show up, nobody shows up. Right, right. So I always tell the boys, don't even think I'm doing it for you. I'm doing it for myself. Mm -hmm. You know, I just need my schedule. You know, if I, you know, having a schedule in the morning, that's something that is so rewarding. Um, It's a big struggle to not get upset when people get invasive. Sometimes people um, are very excited when they see someone who had an impact in their life, especially, you know, when people constantly listen to your music and they feel like you're part of their life. Right. They're like, oh, Barry, and you're like, I have no clue who you are. Uh, and they expect me to know, and then they tell me, "What do you mean? We took a selfie in 2016 by my brother's <laughs> up Sharon." I'm like, "All oh, right, okay. you're the one who took the selfie." Nah. <laughs> and it's, and sometimes they would put me in a position like, "You don't recognize me," and I'm like, "No, oh, I'm sorry. Like, nah. I'm so sorry. Like, I'll show you the picture," and they're like, 
I can't find it. Oh, this is another time. <laughs> You're like standing there. So uh, that's that 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 is that 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 could exhaust you. You know, sometimes when people are not being aware that um, I'm not listening to their music. They're listening to my music, so they're thinking about me way more. Me, me to say, you don't even know who they when are. When they show up to Hassan and they know tonight, I'm going to be in this hall. This is the Hassan Kala. Maybe they know who the photographer is and this is going to be the music. I don't know who's going to be at the wedding besides for the Hassan Kala and the Who well, you don't even necessarily even know. You're, right. You're so this is not part of my schedule to meet you. It's also, you're not, it's not... <laughs> People, I think, probably are looking at it like it's a relationship. Right. They technically have a relationship with right. you, but you don't have, you're making an impact, but you don't know anything about them besides right. the fact they're like, could we take a selfie? Right. And, and, and especially after, uh, hopefully, they listen to this interview, they'll be like, I know him even more, you know? So he now, even told me this and that. I'm right. Like, I was trying to be nice. And uh, it is my role. To, to, you know, I'm, you know I'm, I'm, I'm in the happy zone. You know, somebody who's excited is expressing his excitement and I'm allowing it, I'm giving it back to him. And that's all I meant. Mm. I didn't mean, mean to build a relationship or not to build a relationship. Right. It's not right. about that. Kind. And then the other area is of when people, they get excited, but they're not really thinking of how they're going to express that. So they just burst out at you with some joke that they think it's funny and sometimes it could be you know <laughs> sensitive invasive right or not familiar to me and like it's like putting you know that person in the spot that's that that's 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 a that's one of the struggles i would say um then you know there's a struggle of balancing everything that i have right now which is you know family first uh, you know, being a good husband, being a good father to my kids, and uh, keeping them safe and private, <laughs> and at the same time, you know, being out there, and you know, you know, being for the for the people who are looking to be entertained. Um, that's that's a that could be struggling. More, more from like a privacy standpoint, or more from like a time standpoint. Um, it's, it's, it's just being healthy in both places, mm -hmm. balance. You know, a balance of, um, like I haven't put out an album in five, I mean, I put out like schwach albums, like more like, but like a new album, new like songs. Yaitza albums, you mean? Yeah. Like collections and, mm -hmm. you know, I started meaning I put out an album of like, not these types of albums where you have to put in a lot of creativity and but this is know. a good transition to your new album right which i'm putting out now which i'm actually naming carbon really which is called a sacrifice because the five years that i'm waiting is a sacrifice wow. of me trying to balance you know putting what's important do you think this album that you're coming out with is is going to be different because of how your life has changed becoming a absolutely Shiva? absolutely every album is something that is really a mirror of my experiences in life. I mean, I'm not attracted to something unless I'm going through that. Hmm. You wouldn't, um, trying to find something, like, like what I just said is just really what it is. You attract or you're attracted to something that is meaningful to you. Mm -hmm. So whatever is, you know, whatever you see me singing is something that I'm attracted to. Or the opposite, whatever I'm attracted to is probably what I'm going to be comfortable in promoting and singing and expressing and showing off with. So just, you know, to put it out there, for like about eight, nine years ago, I think it's about eight, nine years ago, I was introduced to um, Breast Love more intensely. And at the time, I was introduced to Arab Shalom Arush listening a lot to uh, Blazer Brody's CDs, interpreting his, uh, his speeches in English. I just spoke to him today. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Uh, to? Reb Blazer Brody. Reb Blazer. Yeah. Nice. I've, I've already interviewed Reb Shalom Arush. Oh, nice. Had this class. So Reb Blazer Brody had a very strong impact. It like, like filled up my life with a lot of meaning at the time. And he, he, was, he was actually the one who 
kind of is liable on this whole Thank You Hashem movement that you see today. He spoke about Thank You Hashem to me. You know, it clicked this word, Thank You Hashem. At the time, I named my album Thank You Hashem. You know, I started sticking stickers all around. I started, you know, I did a website and a movement and so on. And then when I moved on to my next album, Hashem found a different shaliyah who did that, you mm. know, and Joey Newcomb came out with this song, Thank You Hashem, and it like really took off. And today, most people know about Thank You Hashem. It's all right. over the world. And um, that was my trip then. Thank You Hashem. I was in the zone of, now my, you know, when when I collect the album, and especially if I'm, wor I'm working, you know, the, you know, four years, four or five years, I want to come out with a message, you know, what's the common ground between everything? I want to link just to simplify it kind of, you know, because in an album you have all types of types of songs, but you want to find common ground. And I found that the most um, competitive, you know, the most, uh, you know, thing, the most uh, linked uh, avoid is the idea of carbon, which is a sacrifice, sacrifice, you know, we visually we see a lamp and you know slaughtering it and so it looks like very dark but really it's our daily life you know getting up from bed is a sacrifice you know to your comfort hmm. and uh in maintaining a relationship whether it's in work whether it's in marriage whether it's between a talmud whether it's between partners within family it's a constant sacrifice that you know when you when you bring that sacrifice to hashem and you do it out of you know good reason and so on. It's a kapara. It's it's a matana. It's something that you achieve. It brings down all the chef in the world. And that's what the sacrifice in time of Vesmikdash would do. You know, it's a sacrifice that would bring down the chef to the world. It would, would bring your cl connection, your tshuva, your connection to Hashem. So I'm finding, and you know, especially as I was going getting into more personal with my students. You know, I was getting you know. It was more heartfelt and it was more struggling for me. You know, it, it was a struggle for me to really, you know, get down to, you know, to, to that place, to that level and to really connect from, you know, from, you know. And if you want to help someone, you really have to, you know, you, you really have to get into that place where that person is and only from that it's real. And that's the, because otherwise you're selfish. Otherwise, you just have agendas. It feels very good to help someone. You know, it's like it's a, you're a dictator. You know, you're telling that person, he just, gee, hmm. I'm a marriage counselor. Hmm. I have this, you know, this this man and woman is going to do exactly how I say because I'm so smart and I'm so famous. Ha, ha, ha. But it's really selfish. Right. The real way of doing that, I mean, the holy way of doing that is give some time and some heart and really go into that place. And that's hard. That's really hard because Why? Why do I don't have my own struggles, you know? Why do I, you know, why do, when I go visit this person, and it's just easy. I go in, I do my thing, I'm just jiggly, jiggly clown, and, and I'm a hero. No, we're going to that place to listen to that person and to feel that person, you know, and to be in pain for two minutes and look, get, gets into your heart. That's why it says when you go visit, a, you know, a sick person, you're taking away a 60th. Right, his, yeah. right. So... As I'm getting more and more Rosh Hashiva, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm focusing into more of a personal connection with the boys rather than just building a dynasty of yeshiva. Um, I consider it as a sacrifice, and I'm proud to have that sacrifice. And um, yeah, and and also a very important thing to speak about my album. Um, Which there will be links on the bottom for anyone who wants to go check it out and or listen. But right. yeah, go on. Sorry. Yes. So speaking about my album, you know, we we just came out of two very uh, I would call I don't know the right word to call it, but two big things. One is uh, COVID, Kavod, <laughs> and the other thing is the tragedy that we just recently had, like Boimer, a year ago. Right. So these were two big shocks. I mean, COVID for the whole world, but I mean, in your personal life, you know, it really had a, it was it was a life changer to probably, you know, most of the people who who are alive. Um, 
I'm not talking about kids or people who are not, you know, there to think. But one of the things that, you know, we singers, we had a pressure is you're a singer, you got to put out something for COVID. You know, everybody's putting out a cool jingle song, you know, got to be relevant. To me, I was rebelling on that. Hmm. It's like, no, I'm not going to take something that's so serious and big and I don't even know where it's going. And there's so many people who are suffering and changing their lives and so on and just ride on that. I don't have the right. Hmm. I don't have the right. I don't think it's fair. It's very selfish of me. Not only am I not going to feel good about it, I don't think anybody's going to feel good about it. They're going to read my bluff. Um, so I figured unless I find something that is really, really like taking me over and really connecting and really giving a message to my listeners, something that is as big as what COVID did to them, then I could do it. And I didn't find that. So I didn't put out anything. But then came the tragedy of Lag Boimer, and this hit everyone way bigger and closer to home in a sense of, it's, you know, fine, COVID, it, it became a part of life. Right. You know? But this is something that's not part of life. Right, it was it, a freak accident. It's, it's a freak accident and or it something like that. shock, and like shock, we're not and, used to it. And putting out a song like that is really selfish. Hmm. But there's one thing, that I did find common ground. Shragi um, Gestetner, who was a, one of the Kedoshim that was a sacrifice for Klai Yisrael. And we all believe that. We believe that. You know, we believe that uh, when a tzaddik passes away, that it's, uh, you know, it's a sacrifice for the generation. I heard today a nice word, but, but I forgot. So I'm not, I, I don't know the whole details from there. But, Shiragi, besides the fact that he was a sweet soul, you know, anybody who listens to the music could hear the smile behind mm. and the heart behind the singing. I had a very close connection to him in a, a spiritual connection. Um, he he got introduced um, a, a while ago to the Rebbe, the Rebbe of his who changed his life he the last three years he stopped singing he got into um more of a serious place where he um felt that his singing is kind of contradicting with his family life mm -hmm. and the way you know he envisioned it and so on and he, he stepped down from singing in order for him to be able to pursue his vision and family life and in his uh, spirituality and he kind of was uh, inspiration to many others of, of somebody who just took his life and, and turned it around and he started learning and this there's, there's video is going around of how he said he never thought he could learn like to him it was like something that he, he connected to you know to grilling steaks at night and to make music and mm -hmm. to just entertainment and so on but then he's he started believing in himself and it changed him until that, you know, everybody who, you know, who, who looked into a little bit about Shragi saw that Shragi is an inspiration of somebody who really changed around his life and became something kind of like holy. And I, Baruch Hashem, humbly had uh, shaykhs to that. I, you know, I connected him to his rough. And although, you know, the last two years, we didn't hang out every night because he just stopped doing that, you know. Mm -hmm. And we didn't. I didn't meet him at gigs and so on. But you know, so on the Shamadik we had that connection. So when I came to Shragi, it really touched me, and I just felt I have to do something. But again, I wasn't gonna be unsensitive to. You know, me putting out something because in that person, you know, in this family lost their father and their friend and their brother and but then this song came about carbon the, the song is is a passing of Ayikra it says Adam ki yakriv mikem karban lashem a person which means that a person who is going to bring a sacrifice like a lamb or a sheep or a goat then Hashem should accept Hashem should accept that 
So Hershey Weinberger composed the song. And he said that Adam Kiyakim Adam Kiyakim a person Adam who is going to be sacrificing from himself any hardship. Karbel Hashem, he should say to Hashem, you know what, this hardship, I'm doing it for you. You know, I'm throwing it at you. You know, accept it and stop. <laughs> stop with those. Enough is enough. It's kind of like a prayer of. I'm going. I'm accepting this Bahava, but send us Mashiach, kind of like that message. And it didn't click to me until I actually realized that my album is not going to be ready before Pesach, which means I can't. My first release date could be like Boimer. And I was like, whoa, like Boimer. Adam is Gematria 45. 45 Kedoshim, who passed away. It's a carbon. You know, I didn't get out, give out a CD in five years. You know, I sacrificed that, you know, to be able to, you know, to have, you know, to help boys in yeshiva. My personal, you know, sacrifices in my life, where, you know, my life experiences and so on, you know, just to be able to move on, just everything made sense. Hmm. You know, and, you know, if you want to look into the album, there's, you know, there, there's songs that you fit into that, you know, into, into that zone, in that area. So I just felt that, you know, Carbon is the most, although it's a dark name, I just felt that this is the most appropriate uh, name for this album at this time, at this point in my life. Mm. And I'm dedicating this song, Lenishmas Shragi. Very nice. Well, uh, Shmiel Berila. Shmiel Dive. Call me Barry. Hold on. Wait. Don't confuse the people life. more than they yeah. already are. <laughs> rabbi Weber. No, you don't like the rabbi. No. Shmiel Dive, thank you very much for. I'll, I'll consider it as a selfie. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. I hope I, I hope no questions were like. It's a, it's a carbon lashem. It's a carbon lashem. Nice. Okay, and then that's it. Okay, Shkach, thank you so much for doing this and uh, get letting me know more about you. Yeah. The main thing is that that we and all the people on this show should be able to inspire and should be be inspired by each other. So, on this podcast, it's not it's not a place to just have famous people. I know I had Ben Shapiro, uh, I just had Barry Weber, and I've had Lipa, but I don't I don't I don't care to sit down with any Jewish singer. Like I really don't. Um, I think a lot of them are incredible and most of them are amazing, but like this isn't this isn't a show for hack. This isn't a show for like, oh you're famous, let me talk to you. It's it's to get it's to get inspiration. It's that means in the name. It's to get chizik from the people I'm talking to and and there's a lot of people to talk to. And it was just a no-brainer to talk to Barry. Like he's he's someone who's who's so much more than just a singer and um don't get me wrong singers are amazing but um this side you know i, I think it was in the ami article uh, a few summers ago that i read and i'm like whoa, whoa, whoa there's this there's i i love the fact that he's a rasha shiva and that work is is really beautiful um and everything he's doing is great and yes barry released a new incredible album you could uh listen to it in uh the link from in the show notes check it out on spotify or wherever you listen to your music go buy it yeah support support him help him do what he does um it's incredible i i listened already um i actually got a sneak peek which was which was amazing um after our conversation we were talking about his uh, the album artwork, and he didn't do it yet. He was like very relaxed. He's like, "Yeah, we'll 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 do it eventually. I like, got to do it eventually." And I saw it, and it's it's really beautiful. Uh, I'm not sure who the photographer was, but props to them. I I it's a pet peeve of mine actually. I I think there's so many album artworks in the Jewish music world that could be done a lot better. And when I saw this album art with uh, Barry, I was it's soulful. It makes you want to listen and. It's great. Check it out. Um, until next time, please rate us five stars on Apple or Spotify, wherever you listen. And if you're watching this on Living L'chaim, 
Thank you. Subscribe to us and uh, leave a comment in the, the, the notes of the YouTube video of who you want me to interview next. I, I read every single comment and I look to you for my next guest. And you go on livingthechaim.com if you want to um, suggest someone or you have any ideas or any critical feedback. And if you want to check out any other podcast that Living the Chaim is producing, we have four other shows, more to come. Until next time, keep on being inspirational. Living the Chaim.